Welcome to the Path Monk Presents podcast. My name is Sean Donnelly Lewis, and in today's episode, we're talking with Tom Shapiro, the Tom Shapiro from Stratabeat.com. Tom, how's it going? Good, good. Thanks for having me on, Sean. All right, Stratabeat. What do you guys do? Sure. So we are a branding, web design, and digital marketing agency. Uh, we focus on uh, audiences such as software and technology, biotech, uh, healthcare, and professional services. And uh, I'd say that, that what makes us a little bit unique from many uh, other agencies out there that provide these types of services is that we base everything on neuroscience, uh, psychology, and behavioral science. All right. So, so who would be who would be some of, talk about your clientele for a second? Would you guys be working with? I'm assuming big companies and not and not particularly small companies, or do you guys do mom and pop shops as well? Uh, so it's mostly mid-sized companies. <laughs> Excuse me. I'd say you know anywhere from from twenty million dollars a year U.S. all the way up to one billion dollars a year uh, is really our sweet spot. And so you know occasionally we'll get involved with a startup. Occasionally we'll get involved with, uh, you know, a mega fortune 500 company. Um, but, but, you know, the, the vast majority of our clients fall in the middle market. And so you guys, you guys providing services to your agency, what, how have you guys been able to grow the business? Has it been a lot of direct digital marketing, inbound SEO, SEM, has it been referrals? How have you guys been able to, to build the business? Sure. So uh, the number one leads driver is definitely referrals and word of mouth. Uh, a lot of clients, you know, if they, they move to another company, then they'll hire us again. Um, and so that, that's, that's been our number one leads driver. And then number two is really uh, Google, where, you know, we're, we're an SEO shop. And so, uh, you know, we, we do very well in SEO for, for certain terms that we're targeting. And that tends to drive uh, a lot of leads. So I would say that that's our number two leads driver. And number three, pre-pandemic, was uh, events, you know, we, we speak at a lot of events. And so the in-person events were fantastic for driving leads. What I, you know, we, we continue doing the virtual events through the pandemic, but in all honesty, we're not finding that, that these virtual events are very good for lead gen. You know, the in-person events, fantastic. The virtual ones are, you know, they're fun to do. It's, it's always great to, uh, to participate and, and, uh, you know, connect with everyone, but uh, from a lead gen perspective, it, it's just not the same. Okay. And why do you think that is? Do you think the participation is, is different? Do you think what, what exactly about the, the virtual experience is different? Yeah, I think it's very different. So if it's in person, oftentimes there will be a, a line of people after I speak in an event who are looking to chat with me and, you know, we exchange business cards and we, you know, we'll talk for five minutes and then we'll have a follow-up afterwards. And so, you know, it makes it a very smooth transition towards talking about their business, their challenges, and, uh, and then that can lead towards doing business together. Whereas with virtual event, you really don't get that opportunity. You don't get to connect in that same way. You present, oftentimes you don't even know who's in the audience. You don't know how many people are in the audience. Uh, you, and, and yes, you do get some questions, but I think that, that a lot of people tend to be, um, uh, a little hesitant to, to submit their questions online. And so you, you get fewer questions is what I find online versus in person. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and then there, there's no real opportunity after the presentation to really connect and engage and talk about their problems that, that you know, they want to talk about and they want to solve. Yeah, yeah, I find that incredibly interesting from, from a lot of businesses being driven just by referrals and this, this the personal interaction when that fails. Um, how the how you've been able to pivot? Just just thinking about growing the business. Um, what role does your website play in acquiring new clients? Uh, so the website is very critical in acquiring new clients. So uh, I had mentioned that you know one of our services is, is SEO, and so we're very serious about developing content, optimized content, long form content, content that maps to. The customer journey of, of our target audiences. And, uh, and so from that perspective, content is incredibly uh, important to us. Uh, and another reason why the website is so critical to us is because uh, we use IP detection software. And so what we're doing is every single day, the very first thing that I do in the morning is I'll check the IP detection software to see who is on the website, right? So who's been on the website for the past 24 hours? And we have all these custom filters set up 
for lead scoring. So we know who is uh, of most interest to us, who would be the best fit for our services and the type of uh, agency that we are, um, and, and who might not be a great fit. And, and so we, we look at the custom filters and then we conduct the outreach uh, right away. And it's all very soft. It's not, you know, we never do a hard sell ever. It's just asking if we can uh, answer any questions they might have. We're just trying to be as helpful as possible. But what happens is, is because it's so timely, that communication is so timely that some people respond within 30 seconds saying, oh, heck yeah, I want to talk. And, and so, yeah, they didn't submit a form on the site, but, but for all of us, I mean, you know, 95, 96% of your audience is not submitting forms on your site. It doesn't mean they don't want to talk with you. It just means that they don't submit forms, you know? And so um, we have found that using IP detection software in conjunction with the website, obviously, is a, a really powerful combination for uh, stirring up new conversations, new leads, new clients. And just if, thinking about other people that are on the show, usually the website is a, is a source of great great comfort, but also a source of great frustration. If you were to able to, to improve, to make small improvements on the website, what, what, would you, what would you want to do? Would it be the ability to convert those people that are visiting, like you're talking about, or while you're talking about the quality of leads, even better, or the user experience? Which one of those three do you think you, could, you would want to you'd improve a little bit? I think, I think it's the third one, the user experience, and I'll give you an example. So we're, we're actually going through a redesign of our website right now. And one of the things which we identified, which we can approve upon from our existing website is uh, more granular audience segmentation where you come to the site and let's say you're a software company or you're a biotech company. We want those to be different experiences on our site. Because you know, if you're at a software company, you have very, very different needs, uh, whether it's branding, whether it's web design, whether it's, it's marketing, you have very different needs than, than uh, a biotech company. So um, you know, what we're gonna be doing is building out these, these channels so that each target industry can have a customized experience based on, on you know, what's most, most prevalent and most meaningful for them. Just coming back to what you guys offer, just for everyone listening, what would you say separates you guys? That helps you stand out in the space that you're in, um, for uh, and opposed to other people that are that occupy the same space. Sure. So there, there are several things. One I had mentioned earlier is our focus on neuroscience and behavioral science, and how we just apply that across the board, no matter what the service is, whether it's branding, whether it's website design and development, whether it's marketing. Where we're constantly uh, basing everything off of that. So I think that's one differentiator. Another is we have a lot of Fortune 500 experience. And so, yes, our target market is mainly mid-sized companies, uh, but our backgrounds and through our careers, we have worked with some of the largest marketing teams in the country. You know, everyone from AT&T uh, to GE to Hewlett Packard, uh, you know, on and on, um, uh, Intel, uh, Kraft Foods, P&G. So, you know, bringing that type of experience and that type of knowledge to mid-sized companies is, is something that, that we feel is unique. And then another thing is, you know, you'll find a lot of agencies out there which are branding agencies, or you'll find a lot of agencies out there which are web design agencies, or you'll find a lot of agencies out there which are digital marketing agencies. And so I think that it's, it's rarer to find an agency that straddles all three uh, so that you can take an integrated approach through all of it. You know, typically, you know, you'll start with brand strategy and work through branding and web design, and then, you know, you're ready for, for a lot of different marketing initiatives. Very cool. And this is part of the show where I get to pick your brain a little bit. And uh, as a marketeer, when you hear the word innovation, what would you say is the biggest challenge to innovation with your marketing cap, cap, cap on? Yeah. So, okay. I'll, I'll answer this in two ways. One, uh, I think that a lot of marketers at brands, at companies, uh, are hesitant to innovate. And the reason I say that is because they need to keep their job, obviously, right? And the more risk that you take, you know, it, it's perceived that there's a bigger chance of uh, dropping off, of plateauing, of, of not achieving your goals. Uh, and so what's interesting about that is that it's actually the opposite is true from our perspective. So I wrote a book a few years ago called Rethink Your Marketing. And in, in developing that book, I interviewed 
many, many different CEOs and CMOs and VPs of marketing at many different companies. And uh, one of the things which I found, and there are over 50 different case studies in the book. One of the things that we found across the board, across all 50 case studies is that in order to unleash growth, you really need to take very bold, decisive action. You can't try and tinker around the edges, right? You can't just like try and tinker with 5%. It, you can, but you'll get very incremental growth that, that it looks like you're plateauing. Um, if you really want to break through, if you really want to differentiate yourself from the competition, you need to take some pretty bold, decisive action, right? Some big, bold bets, right, is what we call them. Um, and we're big fans of taking big, bold bets. And these are not reckless bets. So how do you mitigate the risk of big, bold bets? Well, you develop a matrix. So we have a very, very detailed matrix in terms of identifying opportunities. And we look at the speed with which they can be executed, the cost involved, uh, the, uh, the expected return, and the expected ROI for the entire initiative. So putting, you know, the, the revenue that you can expect to, from it or the number of leads that you can expect to it against the costs. Is it worth it, right? Uh, and so we put this, this uh, fairly complex matrix together whenever we're, we're brainstorming ideas and marketing plans and marketing ideas for clients in order to figure out what is going to achieve the greatest ROI from an innovation perspective. And so we don't just throw ideas at clients. We don't just say, oh, wouldn't it be cool to do this or do that? We say, look, here's the matrix. You can see for yourself, this is really reliable. It sounds on the surface to be very risky. It sounds like it's a crazy bold move, but actually we think it's very safe, very reliable. And this is why it's gonna surprise the competition. This is why it's gonna break out of the pack. This is why you're gonna captivate people. And this is why you're gonna make money. And is it keeping the same theme here, when I say conversion optimization, what would you say is the biggest challenge when it comes to marketing? Uh, the biggest challenge is that a lot of companies don't do it. <laughs> you know, that's what we find. You know, we and, and it could be the, the, the area of the market that we play in. So we play in the mid-sized uh, area of the market, right? We don't tend to work with that many startups. We don't uh, you know, the number of Fortune 500 companies we work with is, is, uh, is a low number. And so when you're talking about a company, let's say that's $50 million a year in sales or $100 million a year in sales, um, what we find is many of them are not doing any type of conversion optimization. They talk about it. Um, they might have purchased some software, but there's no real actual CRO program, which is systematic, uh, where, you know, there's a timeline, there's a calendar where um, there's a testing plan in place. And so um, a big value add that we find that we bring to uh, some of our clients is simply getting them going, getting them you know, out of the, the starting blocks and you, know, you execute it and you start to do it on a regular basis. And then it becomes something that's very manageable. And then it's something that's just part of your flow. It's part of your, your weekly discussions as part of your monthly reviews and quarterly reviews. And, um, you know, it could be something as simple as this, you, you know, you could be focused on uh, developing a lot of content, right? And so let's say that, that you're working on driving a lot of organic traffic from your blog, for example. And so you might be doing a lot of different things with that in terms of long form content and lead magnets, uh, certain levels of PR can be conducted that way. Um, but what type of CRO are you doing within your blog? So even outside of your products and service pages, right? Just looking at your content itself, a lot of companies forget that they can do CRO just as robustly on their content as they can on their product and services pages, their money pages, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what that's one thing which we, we find time and again is we, we can introduce A-B testing. We can introduce, um, you know, these different ways to introduce different types of CTAs. Uh, we can base CTAs off of different behavior behaviors of the site visitors, um, and, and so we're hitting them with the right CTA at the right time for the right person. Um, and, you know, a lot of that is, is new to mid-sized companies. Um, but, uh, but, you know, when, when we think of CRO, you know, we see a big opportunity for mid-sized companies to capitalize on that. And just thinking of the overall marketing picture, if you were to focus on one thing, 
what would it be? Would it be the road mapping? Would it be the growth initiatives? Would it be the messaging? Would it be the reporting? Which one of those do you feel like for you is the thing? Uh, so I, I think that the way that companies, a lot of companies communicate and message to their audience uh, fails them from the beginning. And, and let me explain. So you might have amazing offers. You might be set up for amazing conversion optimization on your site. But if your messaging is what we call dictionary me messaging, right? So you're explaining what you do. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of companies do. We, we see this all the time, right? They explain what they do. Uh, and, 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 you know, what, what's going to happen is uh, your audience will, will hit your website. And no matter how optimized it is, no matter how great it is from a conversion perspective, they're going to be hit with this messaging, which just tells them what you do. Well, they're probably looking at five or six or seven different companies, just like yours, right? Because everyone evaluates different options. And so if all you're doing is you're explaining what you do, well, guess what? The others do it too. And so if you're a CRM software company, guess what? They're looking at other CRM software companies, telling them that you're a CRM software company or that you're a global CRM software company or you're the number one CRM software company doesn't tell them anything, right? And it doesn't move them to action. And so if you really want to move them to action, you have to, you have to spark something inside the brain. You have to hit upon the questions that are running through their brains uh, and, and, and answer those questions to drive them to action. You, you need to evoke an emotional response so that they will take action. I'll give you an example. So um, the, uh, the psychologist, Alfred Yarbus, ran some really interesting studies where he showed people a painting and all of these different people were, were, were um, siloed, they, they were, you know, uh, Taken, uh, taken away so that they weren't with the others. And then they were shown the same exact painting. So everyone saw the same painting. But before each person saw the painting, uh, Yarbus would ask them a different question. And so for instance, he might say, oh, what, uh, what's their status in society? Or what, uh, how old are they, right? And so if the question is how old are they, what he found was the person would only look at their faces and would not look at any other part of the painting. And if he asked them what status are they in society, people would not look at their faces at all. And instead they would look at their clothing and the furniture. And so depending on the question that's running through your site visitor's mind at the time that they hit your site, you better be answering the questions that are running through their mind, right? Are they thinking how old are they? Are they thinking what status in society are they? So they're gonna have the equivalent for your types of services, right? Or your products. And you need to know what those questions are that they're asking. And your website needs to, needs to respond to that as well as excite them and captivate them and evoke an emotional response. That's how you're going to maximize your conversions. And that's when having an awesome funnel, having an awesome conversion optimization mechanism on your site will make sense because then you can capitalize on it. But if you're not priming them to take action, you're going to lose them before you ever get the chance. Just switching gears here a little bit, I want to talk about you as a leader. What kind of content do you consume to educate yourself and grow as a person and as a professional? Sure. So uh, I'm on Twitter a lot, and so you know I see I see a lot of really brilliant people posting a lot of brilliant things on Twitter. So I enjoy that, and then uh, I also read a lot of books. And so um, you know one one thing that I hear from a lot of people is they don't have time to read books. And I'm always surprised by that because to me, books are a gold mine. You know, you, you have all of this wisdom and experience and knowledge and guidance and, and all you have to do is read it. <laughs> and you're getting years and years of wisdom. Uh, and so I, I love reading and I, I'm an insatiable reader. I'm constantly reading books. Um, and so I would recommend for anyone who who has thought that they don't have the time to read books, I, I would make the time. It's really worth it. Since we're slowly coming to the end of the podcast, we have one more section to run you through, Tom, and it's our rapid fire. So basically I just ask questions and you answer them. And you know what? You can feel free to elaborate because some of them will need elaboration. But um, other than that, short and sweet answers. You ready for it? Yeah, sure. Hit me. 
All right. Talking about books apropos, what is the last book that you read? The last book that I read was uh, Good to Great. Okay. Oldie but a goodie or a grady, right? Yep. Um, <laughs> what's the one thing that your company's focused on at the moment the most? Uh, we're actually building software. Uh, and so it's, it's something new for us. Uh, we've never done it before, but we have found that uh, there's a need uh, for certain SEO and content marketing software that just doesn't exist in the market. Uh, and so we're going to build it ourselves. Very cool. If there were no boundaries in technology, what would be the one thing you would want to have fixed for your company today? Uh, I would want to know everyone who's on our website. So I talked about IP detection software before. And so there are two levels of IP detection software. The certain kinds or certain applications will reveal the company or the organization that, that's on your site, right? Others that are more expensive will reveal the actual individuals. But in either case, you'll never get 100% uh, of, of the data, right? Like, like you'll never see all of the visitors to your website. It'll only capture a fraction. And wow, we would pay a lot of money to be able to see everyone who's on our website. What's the last thing that kept you awake at night about your company? Oh. Um, Obviously, if you sleep well, then you could say you sleep well. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I tend to sleep well. I mean, we have a great team. I love the team. I love the direction we're going in. I just had a great conversation this morning with our COO about how, how happy we are with, with how things are trending. And so... Yeah, I mean, good or bad, I, I sleep really well at night. <laughs> if you could start your professional journey over, like, let's just say your professional journey over again, what would be the one piece of advice you give yourself? Uh, definitely would have started developing software a lot earlier. I would not have waited this long. All right, everyone. That was Tom Shapiro at stratabeat.com. You can check out all the great work that they're doing there. Tom, thank you so much for being on the show today. Uh, Thank you, Sean. Our last part of the show is just the last word. So our guests, usually we give them the honor and privilege of having the last word. So if you feel like there's something we forgot, or you just want to sum up everything that we talked about, I just want to give you the last word. The floor is yours. Great. Thanks. Yeah. So I would say, you know, we were talking about being bold and taking big, bold bets. And, uh, you know, I just want to circle back to that. And really the, the value there is that it is a difference maker. Uh, you know, you can tinker around the edges, you can try, you know, optimizing a little bit here and there, but the, I'm telling you that that is not how you achieve breakthrough growth. If you want to really grow fast and accelerate your growth, you need to think bigger, you need to think bolder, right? And you need to take those decisive steps. But then, you know, as we were talking about, don't rely on dictionary marketing to, to, to message to them once you start gaining contact and start gaining traction. You know, you really need to evoke an emotional response out of them. You need to captivate them. You need to answer the very specific questions that are running through their minds as they hit your brand. Uh, and if you do all of that together, you take the big, bold bets and you're relying on uh, neuroscience, behavioral science to, to get your message across, uh, then you're going to achieve very big things. Thanks for being on the show today, Tom. Oh, thanks so much, Sean.